LinkedIn presents. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, where your source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development, where we share original research, explore industry trends, and interview executives and thought leaders from across the globe. We hope you join us often for practitioner-oriented content around all things related to leadership, HR, talent management, organizational development, and change management. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page, and please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Vishal Kumar about the impact of technology on the workers of today. Vishal Kumar, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It is a pleasure to be with you. You're joining us from Boston. I'm south of Salt Lake City in Utah. And today we're going to be talking about the impact of technology on the workers of today. And this is always an interesting topic to me, but I think especially right now with the AI wars and everything that's going around in that front, uh, it's particularly important and timely. So we're going to be exploring all of this together today. And I'm super excited to pick your brain and learn more from your insights. As we get started, I wanted to share Vishal's bio with everybody. Vijal Kumar is one of the leading thinkers in the field of the future of work in the age of technology and machine learning. He has been an outspoken advocate for the role of society and government in building and flourishing future for everyday workers. Vishal, through his startup Tao AI, has built the world's largest career platform that ensures no worker left behind. Through technology, Tao AI is introducing ways to ensure workers of today could be transformed for their jobs of tomorrow in humane ways. He has been inducted into Big Data Hall of Fame and covered by various media outlets as a leading data-driven thinker. Again, a pleasure to have you. Anything else you would like to share with me or my audience by way of your background or personal context before we dive on in. No, I think, thank you, John. Uh, I couldn't have been said any better. So yeah, love, love to. Well, why don't we start with you just explaining a little bit more about Tau AI. There's so many different uh, companies out there uh, utilizing machine learning and AI technologies. And of course, we we know about the the AI wars, you know, Google Bard and Chat GPT-4 and the Bing chat and every everything that's going on. Um, that's really been transforming the way thing, people have been thinking about technology and the future of work over the last several months. Um, but tell us a little bit more about how you fit into that landscape at Tau AI. Then we can start to dig in more generally to the impact of technology on workers of today. Interesting. So, um, uh, so thank you, thank you for having me on the show, and 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 thank you for what all you are doing uh, for the community. I do appreciate uh, you on this. So, Tau has its root um, engraved. Uh, uh, in how a technology would help workers stay employed. So uh, I used to, in my past life, I used to be a data scientist and, and did some 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 fancy project with companies on on big data and, and the use of data in, in building the technologies uh, and the organization of the future. And in one of the conversation, I was asked by one of the government officials from Sydney. So she said, Vishal, you know what? People pay taxes and machine don't. And if people don't pay taxes, government will go bankrupt and we are going bankrupt. So I said, what does it even mean? So, so she, she said, Vishal, you know what? We are, as a government, we are failing to keeping our citizens and, 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 and folks gainfully employed as tra- technology is transitioning through. How can we solve that? So Tau was created on this very small uh, uh, mission of how would a technologist, if, if a bunch of technologists think about technology which are human-centric, which ensures that Vishal is happy and gainfully employed, would work? So we are, in a way, working with ChatGPT 
against chat, chat GPT in a weird way to make sure Vishal's interests are secure as technology is transitioning through. Super interesting. And one of the critiques of AI and deep machine learning has been, you know, what does that mean for displaced workers, you know, displaced tasks, displaced jobs. Um, now, I've always been one, you know, that I, I'm a believer that as new technologies advance, uh, they do displace people, but usually they create new opportunities, new jobs, new professions, um, and, it, and it automates the things that, um, you know, may be less interesting about one's job anyways. And so really in the long run, it's, it's, a, it's a net gain for individuals in their work design and the types of work that they do so they can do more meaningful and purpose-driven stuff. Uh, it's also a win for society as a whole. Uh, that's my general philosophy around these types of disruptive technologies. Uh, but that's a, a persistent critique and concern that people have. Like, what is this going to mean for workers uh, who who all of a sudden, you know, a huge chunk of their job or perhaps their whole job can be uh, done by these AI uh, or deep machine learning or even advanced robotics types of technologies. Um, so what you're doing at Tau AI, I think, is an important piece of that. Like we need to acknowledge that, yes, well, I think overall it's a net positive for society as a whole uh, as we embrace these technologies and, and embrace them in careful and meaningful ways. But we also need to reskill and upskill the workforce. We need to make sure that people aren't left behind, that people can uh, get the training they need so that they're ready uh, for the next iteration of their career. Uh, and that sounds like it's exactly what you're trying to do there. Yeah. And I think so. There are two interesting patterns that, that we are seeing when, when we talk about the impact of technology on worker of today, right? So earlier, there used to be like a one disruption. Right, so either 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 the hard the hard drives are being disrupted to contain more data, or either the the cloud is getting disrupted and now we don't have to carry drives all with us, we can move stuff around. This time, all the technologies are colliding with each other and creating its own disruptions. Right, so earlier we used to prepare workforce, we get some head headwind. Okay, there's there's this pattern. Just everyone just learn dot com, you will survive. There's a five six hour shelf life. Everyone is happy. Like few, few had this struggle, but majority of the workers uh, pass through, and many of these interesting use cases will emerge. But in in today's time, all the technologies are going through their own S curve disruptions, right? So now AI is inter intermingling with search, is inter intermingling with sensors, is intermingling with with autonomy. So all of these technologies, when they are colliding with each other, the workers are sort of displaced uh, in, in in that analogy in many of these in many of these disruptions, which could mean like a a, a a bigger concern that workers. So one of the best way to handle this is if we look back, because many of these things in some way, form or the other have occurred in the past, right? Yep. So when 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 the cars came along, there was a there was a huge outcry on people saying that car was you the first model of cars were using more lumber. So people were, were worried that uh, all the houses lumber will be gone in making cars. And now like a palladium has a, 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 a billion dollar industry, which is just a catalyst in, in the exhaust of a car. Similarly, we, we have the something similar in which um, say when the, when the calculator came, all the accountant just struggled saying, no, our hand-based calculations are better than what this machine can produce, right? And then this this two side of uh, uh, a dialogue emerge. In all of these scenarios, what helped is better connected people, right? So if I and John are, if we both are talking, there's a strong likelihood we'll come up with some weird ideas that one of you, one of us can, can think of and we can do something about it. And people have been holding on to this idea of connectivity and learning through connections when the disruption happened because it's it's way too much for anyone to master because it's quickly changing, new, new standards are emerging, no clear path in line. Every day we hear a new news about how AI, either Elon Musk is saying, don't do it. Someone else is saying, do it. Everyone is jumping on it. So it's 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 a lot of chaos is happening. So you cannot win this chaos by by mastering this chaos. What you can do is connect better. So all the use cases that are emerging with it, you'll get to it sooner than later. 
I think that's where that's where our technology is primarily based out to ensure that Vishal is never alone in in his pursuit to find the next thing. And I think what you just highlighted is really apt and important to to drill down on for a moment, and that is, you know, every every stage of technological advancement. Uh, people talk about how we're in the fourth wave of the industrial revolution. Um, every time we've had these major disruptions we have seen these same patterns uh, emerge. And every time there's some new technology, it has changed the way we work. It has changed um, the types of skills uh, and tasks that people do, the skills necessary to perform those tasks, et cetera. So while AI and deep machine learning is on the newer cutting edge of these emerging technologies and they are going to disrupt things, it's just another form of disruption. We've seen it many, many times. So if we look back at the history of the Industrial Revolution, we see these same patterns. So I, I think we don't need to be so fearful. I guess that's my general message around all of this is we don't need to be so fearful about this. But we do have to be careful um, okay. because anytime there we have these new technologies, it is possible you know, to exploit people in ways that we hadn't previous thought of, uh, previously thought about, uh, and certainly there are abuses that have to be accounted for. Uh, and so that, that's my next question, really. How um, can technologists be on the right side of history with this? Uh, on the one hand, you have people that are concerned about like the rise of the machines, AI becoming sentient, and you know it's like a Terminator kind of scenario where they ultimately you know take over. Um, so there's those types of kind of extreme concerns. Um, but even if you pull back from that, you don't go that far down that end of the spectrum. There are plenty of people that are worried about um, doing this in a moral and ethical way. As you know, in 50 years, we look back at today, you know, how are we going to, what do we need to be doing now so that in 50 years we can look back and say, hey, you know, we weren't perfect, but we we navigated that pretty well uh, and we're on the right side of history. No, I, I think and that's, a, that's a very important point and, and thank you for picking on that because, um, so I was, I was discussing, I was having this conversation with one of the uh, senior labor official for one of the large uh, European country. And, and he was talking to me about Vishal, you technologies are partly to be blamed on what's happening, right? And what where you're running towards. Because you have been improving on technologies, but you have never you have kept the workers out of your uh, evolution of technology. And and now maybe it's your you have to turn back and now bring people with it as technology is progressing. So that means for someone, if you're a technologist uh, being on the right side of the history, I think with the AI, technology can take care of itself, right? They are, they know how to secure their interests. They are being told how to train to make sure that they continuously improve and perform and, and, and in, in, increase its performance. On the other side, now we have to build technologies which are more people-centric, which ensures that people's interests are still kept uh, no one is displaced. So I think one of one of the one of the things that that we saw uh, before this wave of AI, there was an outburst on content. Everyone is throwing content at people. Hey, Vishal, you want to learn Python? There are seventeen hundred courses you can take on Python. Because Vishal is just one alone guy, and the time is still linear. Last time I checked. So when you have limited time and you have so many courses, I am scared and overwhelmed. Many of the people we talk to, they get so paranoid because they don't know where to start. So one of the consistent uh, struggle that we saw when we polled communities that we are serving was I I have already wasted so much time learning random things that is not materializing to a good job, a gainful job, right? So, and when we ask them, hey, have you spoken with someone for 10 seconds before you ventured into learning say data or whatever? Uh, next shiny thing. And many, many of these guys say, yeah, we discussed, but the connectivity is not proper. Like we have not, many of them said that they're, they're flying solo. And technology has been very good at connecting data and con connecting assets together. Connecting people is not hard. So right now, if we look at all the social networks that's available to us, almost everything is available. Everything is focusing on content. How can we give Vishal a lot more content that he can ingest so that they keep making money out of that 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 use cases, but for an enterprise, for corporations, they're also they are stuck with uh, subscribing to these tools. 
But now as a technologist, we need to build tools which are connecting people better, which are actually more people centric, understanding their pain, their ironies, and using technologies to solve that. And I think now in our conversation, we are already seeing a lot of startups emerging who are now taking that seat of, of actually being ethical on the side of history when it comes to worker. And I think the more and more we pay our debt to society as a technologist, the faster we can create a more happier society together. Otherwise, we'll create a lot more damage than we, we ever saw coming. Well, what, what do you see as the, you, you referred to this a little bit ago, but what do you see as the role of government in all of this? Um, so it would be wonderful if within the free market structure, if organizations would all proactively, you know, mm. look to to self monitor and, and uh, self correct and, and make sure that they're paying attention to these moral and ethical uh, issues related to these technologies. Um, but we know there are bad actors. We know that, uh, you know, in many cases, um, the the negative externalities of the market are going to uh, have a big impact unless they can be, me you know, measured by some sort of government intervention. So what do you see as the role of government uh, in ensuring an equitable and profitable future as we move into this this new age of the future of work that's heavily, heavily uh, enhanced through the use of technological tools uh, and perhaps, you know, we do have displaced workers. Perhaps we do have people that, you know, may have jobs, but may not be working, you know, a traditional full-time job anymore or, or whatever the case may be. So government has a, a very strong role to play in this. As, as you're rightly saying, I think all the, all, all the key points that you pretty much uh, you mentioned that government's role is to make sure that uh, the society's interests are secure through this right it's not we're not government is not serving ais or 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 um, organizations uh, interests government is run by taxpayers and taxpayers needs to make sure government needs to make sure that they 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 own up to them and and other thing and, and we have a great uh, beef to pick with with federal government here in us they are one of the one of the least investor when it comes to re-education programs to train workers, right? So many time workers. So if suppose you are a you are a white collar workers, a worker, you are good. You are covered. You have friends who are at right places. You have networks at the right places. But if you're a blue collar community or a lightish blue collar, lightish white collar communities, you are you are heavily impacted because government programs. Everyone is invested in again training you more content, which is anyways available uh, in all these platforms. Connect, connect, and and I think we have seen government's role during Great Depression. Right? That's one of the hallmark uh, where where governments came together and created these hubs in which organizations and, and people meet, and they give them subsidies to connect them together, and then give excuses so that the employment engine starts kicking in, revving up. And we have not had any major um, uh, innovation in government programs to ensure worker through this new age of uh, technology disrupted ways, uh, because right now their answer is we shall take more courses, right? And which is not more often the right approach. It's connecting, creating more relationships with companies, creating good mentorship program, apprenticeship programs through which Vishal is not, not alone. And, and that's where I think government, and, and to certain degrees, I think we, we spoke with someone from, from UAE they are slightly ahead in this. They are making their AI program available to everyone. They have sort of these uh, connectivity programs in which you can go and learn from each other. Singapore government is slightly ahead, doing better at this. Federal, I think where we, we are leading the world in technologies, we should do something. We have this great advantage from technology point of view. We can actually take a, take a front row seat. Um, and that's why um, I think government should play a very critical role in ensuring majority of these blue collar and white blue collar communities can have some source of connectivity that can help them understand this, this transition and bring them up to speed. Yeah. And I like the focus on connectivity because you're right. When we talk about displaced workers, new emerging technologies, so often we do focus primarily on the reskilling and upskilling of the labor force for future jobs, uh, which is important. 
but that that connectivity piece is equally as important so that we make sure that people uh, do have these these networks so so organizations can get the talent that they need they can get people to fill the roles that they need and individuals have connection to those organizations um, one of the things that i see from a people management perspective is more and more you know this the disruption of the traditional career path um, where you know, you kind of go into a lane and you stay in that lane, you know, people are moving all over the place, but it can be tricky because most organizations are set up um, with kind of that old model in mind. And it can be hard for people to to jump from lane to lane. It can be hard for them to move between different types of roles um, and organizations have to, this is part of the connectivity piece that you're talking about. Mm-hmm. They, they need to, over time, they, we need to create organizations uh, with more latticed and matrix structures where people can flow in and out of different opportunities uh, and that I don't have to have, you know, 10 years of experience in XYZ area in order for me to be seen as someone who's capable to contribute in that area uh, for my organization, because now we're drilling down on um, actual competency sets and, and capabilities rather than arbitrary years of experience or even long lists of, of technical skills that we say are vital for for this job. Um, so if we can if we can get into that um, approach coupled with the connectivity piece that you're talking about and then reinforce it with the reskilling and upskilling piece, I think that's the best possible scenario for organizations and for workers moving into this unknown future. I think that and that's spot on so um, and and couldn't have been said any better. So we, we were talking to, uh, it reminds me of this conversation I had this one of the, I think it's Chief Guru uh, at, at one of the large uh, telecom provider. And I was discussing with this him, hey, and he, uh, and his job is to think about future, how the future is heading and what to do about this. And, and we're talking about it. And he put it very beautifully. So he said, Michelle, you know what? Future does not need, uh, does not need better chefs. It would need better souppreneurs and sandwichpreneurs. So I said, that's, that makes sense. And and his point of view was, uh, if you need to build technologies, you need to make sure sandwichpreneurs and souppreneurs are moving the, the, the kitchen forward, right? That's a, and I said, that's a very interesting way to look at it, that even at, um, and at their level, they are seeing there's a massive shift happening from full time, as you're rightly pointing to this, this, um, uh, uh uh, part-time and uh, freelancing and all these communities, that means the connectivity now is all the more important. That now Vishal probably will be spending time making sandwiches rather than pretending to be chefs and amazing sandwich and then bad at everything else. Yeah, so yeah. probably I'll end up spending less time making sandwiches and probably make, make more money that way. So it 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 balances that piece out and I'll, I'll be living a happier life there. So spot on. Yeah, yeah. Well, Vishal, this has just been a really fun conversation. We could go on and on, but I note the time and I need to let you go here in just a minute. Before we wrap things up for today, I wanted to give you a chance to share with the audience how they can connect with you, find out more about your work, your team, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Thank you. So um, you can find me at uh, Vishal at uh, tau.ai. That's T-A-O dot A-I. And my company is T-A-O.ai. Uh, check us out and let us know uh, how we produce a lot ton of content how to improve uh, workers, how to improve working situation, how workers can transform this in, with this new and emerging world. So if you're a worker in this economy, um, I think one of one of our, our primal advice is never be alone. Talk to people. It's very important. It's, it's, it, it will do more wonder than you ever imagine. Don't shy that, okay, this will happen and that will happen and you'll not be able to connect. That's, that's number one point. If you're an organization, right, create those organic connectivities because our brain is still the most most powerful creative computing uh, power that any organization is paying for. We are the biggest expense in any organizations. Why don't we make use of it, right? So creating those those connectivities uh, forward, and if you're a government official, have those sparks, create those sparks for the communities because communities need to engage as as sort of this because we don't have to be stopping technology because that's that's not going to work. We have yeah. to prepare ourselves to be to be with it as we're going through it. Yeah, well said, Vishal. It has been a real pleasure. I encourage the audience to reach out, get connected, find out more about what Vishal and his team can do for you. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe. 
that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. Do you enjoy the Human Capital Innovations Podcast? Enjoy ad-free listening by going to the Patreon page. And please consider contributing even at the producer or sponsorship level. And please leave a review. Thank you for your support. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.